Here's another episode of Flight Tales with Daryl McCorvey. Woo! Mm. <laughs> All right, good. Daryl is an attorney here, and where are you from? Are you Pensacola, Florida, okay. originally? Uh, but I've been living in Lafayette, Louisiana, since 1998. Okay. And the firm is McCorvey Law. McCorvey LLC. Law, yeah, that's right. <laughs> McCorvey Law LLC. You can find us on the internet. <laughs> McCorvillaw.com. Well, I know I, that you had uh, played for LSU. Mm -hmm. You went to college at LSU. Yes. Yeah. So how? when did you play for LSU? So I played for LSU uh, 19, well, no, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, 1988 to 1993. Okay. And actually, uh, what you probably don't know is after I played at LSU, I signed a free agent deal with the Indianapolis Colts. Okay. So I was part of that 1993 season kind of made it up to the last cut before i was released you had gotten a scholarship at uh, lsu right yes yes from pensacola scamming okay so that's how i made it to louisiana play football for lsu and kind of been in the state for pretty much since 88 when you played for the colts did you move up there yeah well you know so it was training camp is in anderson indiana okay. so we were up there for that period of time and we actually lived in anderson all the way up again into that last cut when i was released uh, that that was home so when you were at lsu i guess you were also going to school to become an attorney well no no so so lsu my undergrad major was uh economics uh I didn't get into law until probably, or just the, the, the idea of going to law school until probably my junior year, because one of the jobbers, football jobbers I worked for was a law firm. And I really got to see what they did up close and personal and just kind of helping people and changing lives through fighting to recover when someone had injured them. Yeah, And it was really appealing to me. So I switched up my plans of being a stockbroker to being a trial lawyer. And so you've been doing that since uh, for a while now, since I guess. Yeah, we have we're 24 years of practice. Okay. 24 years of practicing as a lawyer. Okay. Mm -hmm. I met you whenever you decided to start flying. So what, what made you want to get into flying and what interests you in it? Well, well, to know a little bit about what led me to flying, you got to back up to where I grew up. Pensacola, Florida. Okay. Oh, yeah. You got the Blue Angels there. We got the Blue Angels. Like every other weekend is a flight show. Yeah, that's right. I guess that, and, that doesn't matter where you live yeah, either. It's, you see yeah. it all. And and they train all the Navy pilots there. Yeah. So, so Pensacola skies, particularly the beach areas, always buzzing with either trainers or jets. Um, so it's, it's like in the culture there and you just can't help but notice it. So uh, I guess I developed my kind of love of the idea of flying then. But, you know, when football gets involved, yeah, you, particularly at the level I played it, it's, you don't have free time. Yeah, you're fully you know, immersed in football. Know, so so it was always there and it was something that I wanted to do, but it, it didn't manifest itself until later when I decided to call you up because a good friend of mine recommended oh, okay. Owens Flight Training Academy. We'll give a shout out to Bishop Jarvis Harmon. Oh yeah, yeah, Jarvis, yeah. He, he sent me your way and said, hey, this is one of the best schools in the Acadian area. Ryan's easy to work with, you'll really enjoy it. So that's kind of how I met you and yeah. started this journey a couple of years ago. Yeah, so let's see, when did you come? Was it 2021 20, or 22? I think it was probably 20. Because oh, I think okay. I think I kind of got licensed, got my license maybe in like twenty one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you probably started in twenty, and then yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, off track of time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Time flies, right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. And you know, we did. You know, and after I got my privates with you, we we went ahead and got that uh my uh IFR uh rating knocked out also shortly yeah there. yeah we did that right after yeah because well, based I upon your recommendation yeah he's like don't don't forget this stuff keep <laughs> yeah. going <laughs> yeah because you get you're limited if you just got your pile uh private because of like weather clouds you know like we were just talking about weather yeah and i think overall it also it helps you become a better pilot because you know overall i think the number one thing that all pilots want to be is safe and, yeah and you want to stay in a learning environment. And, you know, I think it was one of the best things I did. 
you know, to give me that ability to be comfortable when I found myself in IMC conditions. Yeah. You fly to Mississippi, what, every, every, almost every weekend? or Almost every weekend since I finished with you. I got my first Cirrus SR22T. Yeah. It was a seven, a 2017 model. And uh, as I sit here now, I have about 580 hours. Okay. It's a traveling machine and we like to travel. Yeah. And you take it to Colorado and... Take it to Colorado. In fact, that's why I bought the 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 T as opposed to just the 20 or the natural aspirated one because I knew I was going to be going into the mountains. Yeah. And I wanted to have that ability to go in the mountains and, and have the climb performance as well as dealing with the high density altitude yeah. that you, you experience out there in the summer. When do you usually go? Is it during the summer or is it just? So so I fly to Colorado during the summer as well as the fall and the winter too. Okay, so you do have to deal with high density altitude. Yeah, 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 yeah. during the summer uh, and, you know, for hunting. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, it's just, it's a great state. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's a great state. out there, yep. And, you know, the and the thing about the Cirrus and I guess general aviation in general you know, it basically just opens up the world for you if you have the ability. You're blessed in order to be able to either have access to a plane or own a plane. Yeah, allows you to really move around. Yeah, you don't have to deal with the airlines. Not at all. <laughs> Not at all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, but you had an incident with the. Uh, I did. With this, I did. So serious. So and um. So back, I think in 2020. Two maybe I was headed to Bay St. Louis, you know where I think I camp. tell you I, I have a camp over there, and I lost a cylinder a little bit past K Rag, which is you know is Gonzalez Gonzalez yeah. Airport, and um, just kind of started acting erratically, uh, manifold pressure fluctuating a bunch, and so I decided to uh, turn around because I just passed K Rag, and that's where the Sears Service Center for yeah. Louisiana is. And I figured, you know, I would, you know, turn around and, and land back there. So it was still running. It didn't completely It was still stop. running at first. Yeah. It was still running at first when I made a, um, a 180. Yeah. Uh, and it was while I was en route there is when I uh, lost that, that uh, the engine apparently quit. Yeah, completely quit. Uh, completely quit. And, you know, kind of went through the whole checklist, best glide rate and all that. And the plan was the land in K-Rag. We were talking earlier about attending the COPA annual migration. Yeah. I had went to it that first year. It was on Amelia Island, San Fernandino Beach, north of Jacksonville. Okay. And they stressed that, that a lot of serious pilots, even though they have the parachute, some of them didn't make it because... They got so focused on trying to fly the plane with the engine out that they got below the recommended oh, yeah, safe the, altitude the parachute, to uh, deploy the parachute. Yeah. So I tell you, it was really a blessing that I had that training several months before my incident because that was like something in my mind, a checklist of best glide speed of 90 miles, a 90 knots rather. And, you know, and if you cannot make it, do not let the plane get below a thousand feet. So as I was coming down, you know, that was just going in the back of my head, back of my head. You know, if I can't make this runway, I'm not going to get below a thousand uh, feet before I pull the chute. The good news is the chute works as yeah, advertised by yeah. Sears. <laughs> you walked away yeah. from it. I didn't look. I I didn't. Uh, I was clear that I wasn't going to be able to make the runway one seven at K Rag because on that end there's uh there's some trees before you then come over to drop down. Yeah. And it was clear I wasn't going to make it and be able to glide in. So I I pulled the chute and. So what was that like to pull the chute? I mean, what what well, kind well, of experience was that? Well, just to... you know, you know, people. I've I've answered this question a lot, and it. It's really, Ron, honestly, it's really, it was really quick. Oh, yeah? It was really, I would say from the moment I pulled the chute, you know, maybe it didn't happen as fast, but it felt like maybe I was on the ground in like 50 seconds. Wow. It's really like a roller coaster. Yeah. Because when you pull the chute, the first thing you do, it when it chute comes out, it catches. So the, the it's going to swing the, the nose of the plane straight up. And then after that catches, the nose of the plane is going to be pointed straight down to the ground. Yeah. 
And then when the line cutters activate, you you flip flat and you come down. So I would say, you know, the whole to me, the whole experience was about fifty seconds. Yeah. That's quick. Yeah, it's really quick. Really quick. Yeah, they I I see in the videos they talk about how it'll nose down mm -hmm. until uh the line cutters yeah, get yeah. and then it comes out. Now, what about the impact once you hit the ground? So the impact, I would say light crash and what may have um i guess affected my landing was the fact that i kind of landed on the water side edge of a retention pond yeah so that was soft mud so maybe i didn't get the full impact but i would characterize that maybe like you bump into something in the car maybe at like five miles per hour okay it was not bad at all. It then. wasn't. It wasn't bad at all. Yeah, that's not bad no, at all. It, it, it wasn't good. bad at all, and because of my radio call, where I came down near the community center there, which is right around the corner, it's from, not far from the airport. From the airport, yeah. so like the people at Glencoe, the service mm -hmm. center, they were on the scene shortly after I got out of the plane and walked across the wing. They were like there, you know, checking on me and so on and so forth. Oh, good. Yeah. And so it was a, it was a pretty harrowing experience. It really wasn't a lot of time to contemplate the emergency, if you know what I mean, from a pilot standpoint. Yeah. One of the things that, that you taught me flying with you is that always focus on flying the airplane. Yeah. Focus on flying the airplane and going through all the checklists of the stuff that you're supposed to do, like best glide speed and you're just hoping that you can make it yeah but fortunately i had the parachute as a backup to where i didn't have to try to put it down in a field or a road or or yeah. something like that i mean you were aiming for the airport but like you just just did, couldn't make it because of the glide two, my two big takeaways from that event is remember remembering that you're the pilot in command yeah like if atc tells you something in an emergency situation, you're the pilot in command. Yeah. When I experienced the rough engine and the failure was at 7,000 feet, you know, when I declared emergency and asked to turn around, I think I was on an IFR plan. The New Orleans ATC basically told me to descend and maintain 5,000. Oh, yeah. You don't have time, especially with an engine problem, you don't have time to. Uh... Well, my, that, my first observation is I shouldn't have surrendered that 2,000 feet. Oh, yeah. Right? So so one of the things that I preach or that I would – an experience that I would give people is that if you have an engine issue, don't surrender altitude except for having to do so to maintain your best glide speed. Yeah. Like there was no reason for me to go down to 5,000. Maybe with 2,000 feet, I probably could have made the yeah. runway at k -Reg. So you were heading, but you were heading, what, we east? I was heading east. And I was almost you had already passed Gonzales, right? Yes. In fact, I was just hitting Lake Maripaz, which okay. is the little lake before you yeah. get to Lake Pontchartrain. Yeah, okay. So I was over that. So that's my first observation. Don't surrender altitude yeah. if you don't have to, other than maintaining your best glide speed. Yeah. And probably she was probably like, like bringing me in for a landing, assuming, you know, I had an engine. Right? Yeah. So, so the, the other observation that, that I would make is that if you have an emergency, don't try to go where you want to go, go to the very closest runway you can. I was thinking, oh, my engine's sputtering. You know, the service center will be able to tell me what, what's going on yeah, and have I'll me go, on my way, right? I'll go, yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm just going to go to the service center. But so, yeah. so in theory, had I probably, I was closer to Hammond, right? Yeah. I wouldn't have had to turn around, lose speed and all of that going back. I was probably closer to Hammond or the airport. I think it's Louisiana. Is it Louisiana? Oh, St. Tammany Airport. Uh, Not St. Tammany, the one that's in oh, St. Saint Saint John. Oh, South Yeah, yeah South, South Lafouche. Lafouche. Yeah. So I was probably closer to those two airports. But in my mind, I wanted to go to my service center. Yeah. Where where Taylor, my mechanic, and all those guys and Todd that I know over there, as opposed to saying, 
My engine is not acting right. I don't know what's going on with it. It's sputtering. I don't have time to try to figure it out in there. So those are the two observations that that I take away from my incident is one, get the plan on the ground. If you can't explain why it's acting funky, get it on the ground as soon as you can. And there's a button that says nearest. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and if you just hit that nearest button in a G1000. Yeah. And even, even if you don't have a G1000. If you got a 650, you know, it's got a yeah, nearest button too. Yeah. Put the plane on the ground as yeah. soon as possible and then try to figure out what's wrong with it. Two, don't surrender altitude if you don't have to. Yeah. So, you know, that that was my experience. I think it's made me a better pilot in a sense of that, you know, those are the two things that like that are with me now is that putting the plane on the ground as soon as you can. Anytime you can't understand why it's not doing what you want it to do. And two, don't surrender altitude. Um uh, frivolously, yeah. so to speak. Yeah, that's a, a crazy experience. Look, man, I, look, I played in front of 80,000 people. You know, I've, you know, not to say that football is, you know, translate to everything in life, but pressure situations is what I know. And people who perform in pressure situations know that the, the quickest way to not perform in a pressure situation is to panic. Yeah. And, you know, look, there's a reason why I went to Owens Flight Training, (laughs) right? To learn how to fly airplane in the good times and the bad times. And there's a process and a procedure to go through even when you experience, you know, difficulties, right? There's a process and a methodology to go through. And fortunately, you know, you know, I, I went through that and it was able to keep me relatively calm, you know, you know, sweating. Yes. Yeah. But not, oh, oh, what am I going to do? It's yeah. like, you know, I, you know, I'm trying to get on the on, onto a field somewhere. So, yeah. yeah, it was a it was a it was a pretty harrowing experience. But, you know, I think it's made me a better pilot. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you had, you know, I mean, we, we practice that in the Cessnas, you know, engine mm-hmm. failures and stuff. Yeah. And you don't really have the shoot to back you up. So luckily you had the shoot. Cause even though you were thinking, Oh, I'm going to go over to this maintenance shop and they'll figure out what's going on. And you didn't quite make it, but you had the shoot to back up, get you there. You know? No, no, it was a blessing. And look, and that's the reason Ryan, frankly, I think if you remember, I was talking about a, there was another pa- plane a you were looking Panthera, at. Yeah. You know, and, and, and I, I settled in on a series because when I start, you know, people talk about it. You hear people talk about mission, mission is when well, you're a student pilot, but you don't really get it until you're at the point of trying to buy an airplane and getting the best plane that fits your needs. And one of the things that really appealed to me was the ballistic parachute to have a backup to where if you don't know what's going on and, and you have your family with you or something, uh, having an alternative you know, to get you on the ground safely. And that's kind of what led me to that. And look, I, I fly serious today. I mean, you know, I, I was able to upgrade to a 2021 okay. G6. So uh, with low miles. Okay. <laughs> what was miles. the, how many hours did the other one have? So, so when I bought the other one, it had right at a, a thousand hours on the engine, total, in, uh, total engine time, uh, Oh, and max engine time, I think, is 1,900. Okay. So, about 1,000 on it. Turns out it was a bad batch of cylinders in 2017 okay. that came from the factory. And one of those cylinders ended up in that 2017 I had. So, it actually fractured. And all those broken parts got pushed into the engine that pretty much eventually shut it down. So it was one of those kind of situations. But again, that's that's kind of what attracted me to the shoot because that's one of those issues that you can't really plan for. No, you have that, no idea that yeah, that's going to happen. That the, uh, the piston fractures, yeah. breaks up, and all the metal parts are shoved into the engine. Yeah. I mean, that ain't supposed to happen. <laughs> no, that ain't supposed to happen. That ain't supposed to happen, right? No. <laughs> that wasn't a maintenance issue. wasn't the training no, issue. No, you, you probably maintained it well. Oh, yeah, you know, yeah, You brought yeah, it well. to the service center and yeah, all the stuff done. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So, 
And that's 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 the beauty of the shoot, man. So you, now you're flying a 2021, mm-hmm. and uh, you didn't get you you got it right away, didn't you? Right after. And people, you know, they say, "Man, you you had that incident." Yeah, you aren't. They didn't freak you out or anything. No, because because one, I knew it wasn't pilot error. Yeah, right. It was a mechanical error. Mechanical things break, right? Yeah. And I don't know, Ryan. I don't know if you're like this because you do it for a living. Yeah. But for us recreational guys, we love flying. Yeah. <laughs> we love flying anytime we can fly. Give me a reason to go fly my plane, yeah. and I'm flying. Right. <laughs> I don't know if it's like that for you because it's a job, right? Yeah, that's yeah. But for me, it it was the worst couple of months waiting for the insurance check to come in to buy my new plane. Yeah. It was the worst. <laughs> and I want to give a shout out to Cirrus corporate guys because they reached out to me immediately. Oh, you did know, they? just to check on me. You know, because we, you know, we, the, the the flying G, GA flying community is small, mm-hmm. but even the serious community, although it's big, it's a subset small. And they reached out right away if I needed anything. You know, if I, whenever I'm ready to jump back on the horse, you know, they would help me find a replacement and so on and so forth. So I was really pleased by the serious corporate guys reaching out and checking on yeah, that's great. Mm-hmm. So you got your new plane and you just, it's uh, been working out good. You going back and forth. Yeah. Back and forth. Uh, you know, I, I'm probably going to fly this weekend. If the weather holds up, um, you know, we, we've been all over the country. We've been uh, the East coast, um, South Florida, Colorado. So, so you're going to get a vision jet next, right? Well, if I had vision, <laughs> if I had vision jet money, Okay. We all would have, would have had a vision oh, jet. Oh, okay. <laughs> but I don't have vision jet money, so. You're going to stick with the yeah, 22T. I, I'm, yeah, look, the 22, <laughs> I, I love the hourly cost of operation. Uh, it's something that, that, that I manage well. And I really don't have a mission for a vision jet to be my primary yeah. uh, aircraft, you know. Yeah. But maybe if I had the money to do, <laughs> just just not do miss little, it. Sh- some more cases. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> if, I, if I if I had the money to not miss two point six million, <laughs> I'd probably be having a vision jet. And, and, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's a different experience. I'm glad Cirrus reached out to you right after and like we're, we're con- you know wondering how you were doing and you know and I mean because you know we teach the whole caps. They have some stories on the videos. I, uh, you watched it, I guess, on your transition stuff and talk about how, you know, how it happens and when the parachute comes out and that it's like, what, dropping the plane from 13 feet. But it sounds like you're, once it got down to the ground, it wasn't a bad impact. No, no, it, it wasn't at all. And then, you know, part of that safety thing, the the seat crumples, the cushion in the seat, yeah. and all that is part of the the crash absorption or force absorption mechanism for that plane. Uh, anyway, I, I I heard, I saw the videos in my transition training, and like I said, I went to at least one of the Copa migrations, yeah, and but nothing nothing substitute that feeling of. It's like a roller coaster. You look yeah. straight up, yeah. <laughs> then you're thinking, "Oh, I'm gonna crash into the ground before it pops flat." Yeah. Well, look. Well, let me ask you this: How is it since you're a uh, since you're a CSEP now? How is it uh, instructing in in a serious plane? Oh, it's nice. It's yeah. it's, it's got the air conditioning. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. No, I really like Cirrus. I mean, you know, we we got this SR20 and. Uh, at the end of last year, around September, and before that, I hadn't flown a Cirrus ever. So, and it, they've been great. You know, they. Uh, I love all the training courses. You know, as a as an instructor, they have everything you need to succeed as far as the private pilot course, and then they got the transition courses. So, and they give you a lot of information about your airplane you know, and, and then the whole caps thing and all that, it really informed the owner or student on how to, how to operate the airplane, you know, and, and it's much different than other manufacturers. Cause they don't, um, I don't know of any that has their own training courses like that. I mean, Cessna used to have a training course, but I don't know. They don't, I think they use another 
source. So Cirrus like says, we're going to make our own courses. So it's been great, uh, teaching in them and using them, uh, for training. So I do, really enjoy it. Do, do you find your students are picking flight instruction in the series over the 172s and the 150s? No, because right now I got a lot of career students who like want to save money. And so now if it's somebody like, like you who, who just wants to have a plane to fly for, for, for fun or use it for work or business or whatever. Yeah, they would rather fly the Cirrus than the than the Cessna, but the training the the career guys they want to save money and it's based on the cost, you know. Well, well, let me ask you this: what it, what is the cost differential from training in the one seventy twos as opposed to the SR twenty? Well, it's about two hundred dollars more an hour. Okay. You know, they built the plane for the pilot. Like they, they, they have a lot of features, like just on the G1000, they have a lot more features than a standard G1000, you know, for the, for the, uh, pilot. To decrease that whole pilot load. Thing. Yeah. And they, they put features into the system where it makes it easier for like the, like the percentage power thing, you know, like that's a extra that. Normally on other planes, you'd have to go in the POH and you'd have to look up your altitude and you'd have to figure out what percentage power and leaning mixture and all mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Cirrus puts it all there for you. So you just pull your power to 75% or whatever you want to set it to and then lean the mixture out to where you want to, you know, it tells you where to put it. Yes. Yeah. Well, I'm a fan. I'm, I've been real pleased with my ownership of a Cirrus. Yeah. Real pleased. And for the reason you said that, like the instructional videos that, I mean, like yeah. you want to, you, you want best practices for landings and crosswind. They got a video. Yeah. Shows you techniques that you can then go out and try to emulate in part of your training. I'm real pleased with the product as well as the support. And you have, uh, I guess, and you have icing, um, yeah. on the 22. So, so they have, they have videos on that too, on when, you know, when you should use your icing and, and, um, icing awareness and, in fact, they they were they they strongly suggest you basically take that course. Their their little online video course. They kind of because the whole thing is is for escaping an icing yeah. situation. Yeah, you don't want to. It's not in that. for staying in it. So you know they teach you about having it primed if you know you're going to be in those kind of environments where you might likely uh, encounter icing. To have it on before you get into it, yeah, and just reiterating that the the Fiki system is for escaping it, yeah, staying in it, you know, all that kind of stuff. So you go, yeah, you always take your for the annuals. You take them over to um, Gonzalez. For, yeah, yeah, Glencoe. We're, yeah, Glencoe for the maintenance and stuff. Yeah, yeah, because mine is warranted. So oh, okay, you have to have it done by Sears Service Center. Well, and that's what we do with our, we brought for the hundred hour, I brought it over there too. They, I've been happy with them also. So you go to Copa every, uh, you've gone for three years? Well, this is going to be my third year. Last year was in Kansas City. Yeah. This year, third year I'm going is going to be in Scottsdale, Arizona. And that's the Cirrus Owners and Pilots yeah. Association? Yeah, uh, migration. So okay. it'll be probably 500 Cirrus pilots will fly their planes in. And you have a couple of vision guys in there too, but it's a really, really good time and really good training. And a lot of the CSIP, some of the top, in fact, I think there's a diamond or platinum CSIP. Okay. Yeah, it's platinum. Yeah, platinum. Oh, so uh, so Brian Tariski is one of those guys. I flew with him last year. Okay. They are available too. So you can like schedule a training session with some of the top dogs, some of those platinum CSIPs. But it's a, just a really good time. Just again, just building a an environment of keeping you in a, in a learning, training, bettering your skills environment. Also, just cool to be around a bunch of serious pilots and you know pick their brains about some of the stuff that they've encountered. Well, you're in that special category because you've pulled the shoot. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I'm, I, yeah I'm, I'm, I, I am a shoot puller. Yeah, <laughs> that, that that that. And look, it, it in my story, it works as it's designed. Yeah. And, and we're thankful for that, you know, thankful for that. Yeah. So I went to CX this year, which is like the more the corporate side of 
for all the CSIPs and training centers. And then, um, you know, they break off into different categories for training and service and sales. So, uh, that was pretty fun. It was nice to get to meet all the other, a lot of the other CSIPs and training centers around the area. Yeah. Copa sounds like it'd be fun with meeting all the pilots. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's interesting. Cause that's, uh, yeah, you, you in that special category with the shoot. Ryan, you know, being a CSEP now, they teach pulling the chute. Yeah. They don't, they don't teach off field landings. Well, like if you look in the checklist for spins, it's pull the chute. Don't, you don't do anything else. You pull, pull the chute. Like, you know, in other planes, the Cessnas, they tell you how to get out of a spin, but Cirrus tells you not bullshit. Yeah, and I, I think I think it's an issue or it's a heavy plane. Yeah. Like 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 the one seventy twos that I train with Ryan with and the one fifty, they like fly like kites. You can fly those things like sixty knots. Yeah. Or you just glide slower. forever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so you could like you can dissipate a lot of its energy. You can't really do that with a series. It's, you know I mean, like, I think it's like, it's going to touch down at like maybe 70, 70, 70, 75 knots stall out on landing. So, yeah. so I, I mean, it drops really fast and hard. So, yeah, you, they, they don't recommend. <laughs> well, I mean, that that's what they teach. The POA you know, it's teaches not- that. It, it's not pull the shoot for everything. I mean, you, you, that's kind of what I thought when I first started flying is like, Oh, Cirrus wants you to pull it for everything. But you, you have a, like, like what he did where he was trying to find an airport. He was close enough to uh, making one of the airports. So he tried to do that first. And if you would have made the airport, then yeah, it would have I wouldn't been, have pulled. you would have never pulled it. Mm. But because you weren't able to make it, um, that's another option. You know, normally in a Cessna, you're teaching, okay, there's a field right there. We're going to glide to the field. We're going to circle around the field. And we're going to try and land the field. Well, with with Cirrus, you you could fly towards a field if there's no other options, no airports around, and then you would pull your chute to land in the field because it'd be a better option than, yeah, safer than trying to land in the field and then maybe there's power lines or a cow or whatever, <laughs> or, you know. Yeah. Or ditch or, <laughs> or a mound. Ditch. Or yeah, there's some, something. some kind of obstacle there that could be, if you're coming in at 60 knots, could really mess you up. Mm-hmm. No, no. So so a shoot is a, is a, I mean, that's that's a in, insurable event. That's not a, yeah, that's not, because if you're pulling the shoot, <laughs> Generally speaking, if you're pulling the chute, it's some failure other than the pilot. In my case, my crash landing was not pilot error. So they listed as an incident, a faulty cylinder failing. So that is a coverable offense provided, you know, you have insurance to insure the whole value and so on and so forth. So yeah, you you pull a shoot and you make your insurance claim and 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 like me, you know, I was able to you know to get back into another one, you know, but the weight was oh it was so agonizing. <laughs> I mean, uh, and, and uh, the non pilots won't get this, yeah. But if you're a pilot, you get it, like yeah. like being able to say, okay, where am I going this weekend? Yeah, you know, yeah, like, hop in the plane. Like like I can fly to my cabin in Colorado in four hours, right? Yeah. I, and I probably can go direct without stopping, but you know you get close on fuel. What you have when you land, but can you see that? Like I land in, in Amarillo, and then the second leg is about an hour thirty minute flight, yeah. and I'm there, right? And I and I can do that every weekend if I wanted yeah. to. Um, it gives you t- a lot of time, free time. You yeah. Know. So so I guess my point is that we, it, it might sound like you know we we're 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 entitled and all that but if you get into the ability of getting into general aviation and you discover the freedom of movement and how you can be someplace in a minute like like literally it is life-changing when you have that and it's taken away for whatever reason yeah and in my case it was taken away because they had to do the investigation you know, and it took the insurance. I think my issue happened in October. You know, I didn't get the the insurance proceeds until 
the beginning of January. Okay. Yeah. So I went from flying somewhere every weekend, multiple to sitting days <laughs> to like driving. Yeah. <laughs> traffic. Yeah. yeah, yeah traffic. traffic. Yeah. <laughs> the Baton Rouge Bridge. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Bay St. Louis is, I don't know if you guys, it's a beautiful place. It's a three hour, 20 minute drive or it's a 40 minute flight. Yeah. <laughs> That's a lot better than I mean, 40 yeah, minute like, flight. Like, 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 you know what I mean? Like, you know. And yeah. then, and if you have kids and you let them get used to that, dude, they don't like sitting in cars. <laughs> they don't like sitting in cars. Bro. Yeah, they don't like sitting in cars. So, what happened to your airplane? Is it still? Where's it at now? Do you know? So the crash one is still at K Reg. Okay. The propeller, I think, has been taken off it and sold. I think the 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 G one thousand and all that stuff, I think, were stripped out of it. So the so the insurance bought you know yeah. totaled it or yeah yeah insurance yeah. totaled it because apparently any kind of flaps deployment and there's water involved in any kind of way oh, that's I a see. total loss okay so I think it was a total loss because like I said part of the underbelly landed like partially in that little drainage pond so they totaled it it's still there because I think there's a dispute between a uh, Glencoe Aviation who salvage didn't got it back in the insurance company not wanting to pay for that recovery oh i see okay. so i think he glencoe might have don't hold me to this but i think they they uh, some kind established of a lien on it for oh, okay. their thing and so i think they might even own it by virtue of that lien now so i thought i saw well last time there. i went over there i thought i saw it sitting over there and i asked somebody but they didn't know if that was the one that was it yeah, that was okay. it. if you look at it, it has no propeller on it but it's that uh, well you can Sarah see the hole out the back there where yeah. the chute came out yeah yeah so it's there and i think i was out there not too long ago and i just looked at it and i like all the panels are gone out of it and like okay. i said the propellers off of it yeah and all that kind of stuff. And I believe the FAA requested them to send the engine up there for them to to look oh, at that cylinder. NTSB yeah. stuff, inspection. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think they actually got a hold to the engine. Well, that's a good story. I, I uh, I'm glad you shared that with us. And uh, I'm glad you came to to give us all that good information about the parachute and the experience and everything. Yeah, and he still wants to fly. It didn't scare him out of flying. No, no, man. Look. <laughs> and look again, look, I mean, if you it if you become a pilot, pilots fly. Yeah. You don't become I mean, a pilot, you know, not you fly. said like I you know, I get the urge. Sometimes, you know, because it's a job, you do get tired of going up and flying. Mm -hmm. But if I haven't done it for a week, I'm ready to go back. Yeah, you know, yeah. so I still have the urge, even though I do it every day. You know, I get up in a plane and go fly around. And, you know, I always wonder, right? So, for guys like you, right? So, so you get to fly the whole range of planes. You get yeah. the high performance jets, and then you're in a 152 with yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you're blasting up. A, like, what are some of those? I mean, you flew a Phenom, all right? Uh, not a Phenom, a Piaggio. Piaggio. So, so what's that climb rate? Oh, you're climbing 2,000 feet a minute. So, so what I'm saying, so I've yeah. always wondered, right? Yeah. What's that like for when you had that job of flying those high performance jets that had onboard radar? Yeah. That you are shooting up through any kind of weather, getting above it, and then you're in a plane with a student <laughs> flying a 152, and with a tailwind, you might get 99. Yeah, out of it. well, yeah, it gets. I'm getting. I get to where I'm ready to get out the plane. Yeah, <laughs> like, uh, are we there yet? Are we there yet? <laughs> yeah. yeah, and on top of that, I remember flying with you, and it would be the summer and. It was just like no AC, right? Well, that's so, why I said the, the Cirrus like is killer. nice. Yeah, that's why I said so, the Cirrus. So, so, so that's like, you, you're, you're, you're in this Palagio jet. <laughs> yeah. And then you're in a 150 with no AC. Yeah. And faster than it goes. It's probably really going about 70 knots, you know, <laughs> with no AC. <laughs> that's why I like the Cirrus. It's got AC. <laughs> and no autopilot. <laughs> I'm a serious I'm a serious instructor now. I don't yeah. I don't I don't get no Cessnas. Yeah, you know? I'm I, serious. I, 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 I get it. I was I always wondered by that, man, because this 
that has to be that, that's i want to get more serious students so yeah. i can be more yeah. in the serious more yeah get that ac my checklist is once you get those um alternators on that ac comes on right away mm. we, we don't you know you don't hesitate alternators on ac on yeah. <laughs> yeah, part of the checklist right after alternators yeah. on. Yeah, yeah. You don't see it in the checklist, but that's that's Owen's flight training checklist. Yeah. <laughs> it makes a difference. Yeah, it, it does. Makes a difference. And it works good. Like it's it's I've been in planes that had AC, but they kind of cool you off a little, you know, but the the serious AC, that thing works. Yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. Mm-hmm. Is that how we end this thing? Flight tales. If you made it this far, you listened to the entire episode. And for that, we would just like to say thank you, and we hope you enjoyed it. We would also like to thank Daryl for coming on the show and sharing his story. If you have any questions about today's episode or suggestions for future episodes, just leave a comment or message us, and we'll do our best to answer. If you'd like to check out some fun aviation videos, subscribe to our YouTube channel at Owens Flight Training. Or if you'd like to get more information on becoming a safe, knowledgeable, and confident pilot, just head over to our website, owensflighttraining.com. 